I love teaching you guys poker, but it's so difficult. I wish that you were just absolutely clean slates. I wish you were total beginners. You were just like clay that I could mold into whatever I want. This is not how it goes. You're all poisoned. You're all completely intoxicated by bad poker thoughts. Oh, he checks. Oh my God, he checks. Does he not want to bet for protection? What a huge mistake. You really can cap your range. Once you cap your range, you're done for. It's really just about targeting King 10, King 9, King 8. Hands like that. Let's bet a sizing that we think they'll call. Really important to um rep the king. Well, yeah, you put him on a flush draw and you price them out. Uh, what? Yeah, you have Ace King. Yeah, uh, you flushing? You flushing, mate? Yeah, 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 mate. You flushing? What'd you expect me to do? I had the blockers. It's not your fault. You've sat at the one-three game. You've heard the guy next to you for four hours talk about targeting and betting a size that he thinks King Jack will call and putting you on a flush draw. And a lot of you can't quite access the right thought process when it comes to building a betting range and sizing your bets. These things are not actually that difficult or complicated but you have been poisoned by the poker community. Today, I'm gonna attempt to purify your game by looking at 27 hands that I recently played in a short session on GG Poker. Not all of these hands are about bet sizing and building a betting range, but a lot of them are, and I think they're highly instructive. If you like the content today, don't forget to check out carrotcorner.com for all of our paid content. Let's get into it. I don't know how good a look this is with the sunglasses, honestly. It's making everything nice and dark. It's really, really bright outside today. It's roasting in Scotland for like the first time in 25 years or something. I'm gonna review 27 hands today. I'm actually gonna take the, the sunglasses off because I know you're gonna torment me in the comments and my ego can't take it. Fortunately, this was a winning session and it was a, a session where I thought I was thinking quite logically. There are definitely sessions where I rock up to play and I feel less than rational. I feel like I have desires to win pots that I really don't have any business winning. I feel like I want to force things. I feel restless and patient. This is kind of my C game. My C game, in a nutshell, is an impatient brat that just wants to win every hand. Whereas my A game is like a kind of absolutely ambivalent logician just sitting back and seeing the objectivity of the spots that he's in. So I thought I'd make today's video about poker logic, how to improve your logic in poker. Let's get going here. We have 27 hands to review. I'm going to try and get through all of them in about 20 minutes. Let's go. First hand, we have ace five in the big blind here. We have called and open from the small blind. You can raise, you can call, it really doesn't matter. King, queen, four, rainbow, fill and checks. You can go for a big bet here or you can check back. You can also go for a small bet. I tend to use a big bet in this spot and I'll explain why. So the logic here is that we want to build our strategy in a way that's intuitive to us and makes sense objectively as well with what our range is trying to do. So if you ask yourself, if you had a hand like queen 10 here, do you need to bet queen 10? Like how much utility is there in betting that hand? How much protection do you derive from betting queen 10? The answer is of course not very much. There's a little bit because Velen could have like a six or something and they're drawing to some runner runner stuff. They're drawing to the overcard. But overall, you don't really need to bet queen 10 for protection. You don't need to bet any hand for protection, but queen 10 on this board is an example of a spot where protection is even less important than normal. It's never a primary reason to bet. Shout out to Mr. Phil Galfund. He's always hammering that home in his tweets and stuff. Protection is not your primary reason to bet. Stop betting for it. Do you know the amount of live commentators that lazily talk about, so, um, you know, he's got a bet for protection here. And it's like, no, no, he really doesn't have to bet for protection. So we're building our betting range around our value region, which doesn't have to go as low as queen 10, as we've just said. So if our value region is going to start at like king X, then just use a big bet. King X is very capable of betting big for value. You don't have a lot of hands that want to bet small for value. If you have sixes here, you don't want to bet at all. You just want to pure check. If you have like ace eight here, you probably just want to pure check. But with ace five, it's getting low enough. There are two things that make this a bit more of a bet than something like ace nine. One, it has less showdown value. There are three things actually I lied. Two is that it has the backdoor draws. And three is that it's going to unblock more of the opponent's folding range cards like the nine, the eight, the seven. These are more prevalent in the check fold range than the five or the three because they're more prevalent preflop as air. So ace five is fine to do this with. You have to mix it or you end up over bluffing technically. This is obviously a spot again where you want to use poker logic. You want to think, well, what am I going to build my betting range around? And the answer here is you're going to build it around big king x, two pair, etc. You're going to check back a lot on this node with the nut flush draw. You're going to bet pretty frequently. We go for the overbet here. So using overbet because we are building around that really nutty region. We get there on the river. Hail Mary of a card and going for the overbet here makes a ton of sense. So overall, I think this is a fine hand. Villain folds the river, unfortunately, but what can you do? Pocket nines. Actually looked this one up in a solver. I wasn't sure whether flop was a pure fold or not. It's actually a call at some frequency. 
in game I wasn't too sure, but it's a really grim situation for Button where you actually just have to mix a ton of your pocket pair. If you're earlier position, like your hijack against small blind here, you can just go ahead and fold. If the texture was two tone, you can move more towards the strategy of folding under pairs to third pot that don't have the back door and calling ones that do. But this one is a mix. It might feel grim to call here, but remember. You only need about 20% of the pot to continue in terms of EV and you're in position and you have a few nutty outs to the 9 and you have a bit of showdown value and some lucky nodes where villains stop supplying pressure. The problem is the equity is pretty unrealizable here and that's why even though we have the best hand a fair amount of the time here we realize a lot less EV than the equity we have against villains range. So pretty indifferent spot. We opt to fold onto the next one. Jack nine, min open from the button. We decide to make the peel 10, seven, four. Mixing call and raise here. It doesn't really matter what you do. Quite a high raise frequency though, a bit higher if we have two hearts, diamonds or spades. On the queen of diamonds turn, this is a pure check raise. There's absolutely nothing else to do here. When villain checks back, I think you can go for like quarter pot here. I think you can probably go for third pot with the jack of diamonds blocker. Maybe it seems a little bit thin at third pot, but maybe okay. We decided to check this time. My main thinking here against pool is that it's probably going to be easier to over bluff this node than it is going to be to over defend. To over defend you've really got to make some pretty gruesome looking bluff catches against third pot whereas to over bluff all you really have to do is not bluff king high enough on the turn and then just bet king five of clubs every time on the river or something like that. So I think it's easier to make more mistakes when check two here than it is when facing third pot and that's why exploitatively I opted to check but I think third pot is a, a completely or quarter pot at least is a fine theoretical line. We check it down we do run into eights which is unfortunately a hand that may well have called may have raised actually as a bluff as well but definitely could have considered calling our block bet if we did make it with a 10 i'd be blocking a lot more happily for third pot without worrying about it being too thin especially with a diamond kings here we open under the gun we get a call from the button we go 10 9 9 here we start with a check on these nodes villain is some kind of weaker player obviously you can tell that by the stack depth if you're wondering how often a player with a stack like this is a recreational the answer is incredibly often and you should treat them as such practically every time that would be the most sensible way to go. We go for the check raise. They call. The queen comes on the turn. Not an ideal card, but we do block king jack heavily here. There's a load of pair plus draw hands like jacks, jack 10, king 10, 10, 8, pocket 8s, queen jack, king queen. Stuff like this that they can bet call flop with that's now not going anywhere. I think this is a much better spot to bet in against the condensed mergey range than it is to check in. So we go for half pot here and villain makes the fold. King Queen under the gun, we open, get called from the small blind, 10-3 deuce, so you can check or you can bet here, it doesn't really matter. We opt to roll it and we roll a check this time. Queen of Hearts on the turn, villain checks. This is a spot you usually want to bet, but you can have a bit of check with King Queen here if you don't have the King of Hearts. I would imagine with the King of Hearts this is going to trend pure bet, although I could be wrong. GTO is a lot more tricky trappy than you would think. We roll a check this time, which is going to be okay at low frequency. It's going to be okay just whenever we feel like it actually. In fact, their checking range here is probably really quite underprotected, so checking back and just allowing a card to come off that they could pair, allowing them to bluff the river might even be preferable. Nevertheless, I did just decide to check this time. Villain checks the seven of diamonds river. I think now our equity in real life is far above and beyond our equity in GTO. I think the main GTO sizing here is going to be pot or B80 or B66 or something like that. In reality, our equity is much bigger than that and we can just go ahead and overbet. Get looked up here by the ace nine. It's not even clear to me that this is a bluff catcher. In the Carrot Poker School grade two lectures seven and eight, we talk about the bluff catching system. And you want to first of all, make sure that your hand is actually capable of beating bluffs before you go ahead and call a river bet in theory. That's because the average bluff catcher is break even. This one's definitely losing. It blocks about as many bluffs as is possible while blocking relatively few value bets. Nothing but a nine is really value betting that sizing on the river and ace is few and far between as well. This is a horrible call by villain. I think they're losing to some of our bluffing range. We could have bluffed with ace jack with a heart here and been called by this hand and then won. How surreal would that have been? But thank you for the donation anyway. Jack 8 on the button, open 2.5 and called by small blind. Just going to be betting really frequently here. Villain decides to call 5 on the turn. You can definitely bet again with the 8 of spades in your hand here. I think on turns like this, your requirements for what you need to bluff are going to be not that strict. On some turns that are really wet, you are not just going to be able to bluff with naked pair draws. You don't have a big enough advantage and the caliber of your outs is not so great. I have a video coming out on turn barreling really soon. It's going to be part of the Beginner's Guide series, so do check that out if you want some fundamentals on turn barreling in a couple of weeks. We go ahead and overbet here. Villain folds, not much else to say. I think I missed this. They were short, much better to bet like 10, 50 or 11 here. There's going to be a lot of inelasticity, meaning Villain is likely to underreact to the difference here between 10 and 50 
15. So going 15 is actually just really silly, but I didn't notice the stack. This would be my sizing against someone that is more fully stacked. I could even go bigger at 100 BB SBR here. Queen 5 decide to peel this time. 3-bet bluff is not unreasonable. think this is a clear fold against a big bet. Not much to say. Don't want to go out of line on the flop, guys, to the point where you're just check-raising arbitrary hands there. Losing, in theory, you need a hell of a lot of extra fold equity there to make that good. And against big bet, you're probably just not getting it like you are against one third or one quarter. Going for the cold call here, you can also just three bet. This was a reg. If this was a recreational player, I would definitely have three bet every time, just taking the isolation. Go three way here. If you think about our range again, logical poker, how do you want to build your betting range on this flop? Well, this player here, the under the gun player, can still have a whole host of overpairs and stuff like that. The big blind can easily just have five, four, fours, fives, tens, etc. So neither player is particularly capped. None of our value bets are very thick apart from sets and stuff, and they can make up for lost ground by betting huge later. Therefore, our betting range in logical poker speak is just going to be small bets with things like 10x pocket pair, bluffs, etc. The odd nutted hand that will start sizing bigger later on, but there's just no, no reason to use large bets at this point in this hand. This bet takes it down, but it's good to see how we would construct the thought process that could logically give us the right bet size. 9 6 of spades, easy call, and checking the flop here. This one is going to be a check fold. Don't check raise randomly against early position with two undercard backdoor flush draw hands. They are minus EV, and it's quite difficult to actually overfold on a board this good for cutoffs range. Some boards you can get a bit out of line on. We talk about that in Cash Injection Episode 1, which is all about how to check raise the flop exploitatively. That is not one of the boards we'd recommend doing this in in that video. You can get Cash Injection on CarrotCorner.com, by the way, guys. That's where all of the paid content resides. Pocket eights, we raise to 11 big blinds here. Cut off calls. Ace, queen, deuce. Just going to go for small with range here. There's some situations where we actually turn this hand into a bluff later on. This time, we don't have to. Seven, nine of diamonds in the big blind against button. Button opens, we call. Jack, three, deuce. Another clear fold to see bets. Don't get out of line in common spots like that. I did fold there just in case you're like, ah, he probably punted because he didn't show. I'll show you. Are you happy now? I show you guys everything. I don't only show you winning hands. I show you literally everything. What you see is what you get. There's no BS. Not on this channel. Okay, so we decide to peel this time against the 3-bet cutoff button. We could also 4-bet here, of course. It's totally fine. We decide to donk bet the flop here. I think this is a pretty reasonable line. 965 is infinitely better for our range than theirs, yet they do possess a nut advantage when it comes to the overpair region. For that reason, we want to bet quite frequently and quite small. Again, if you think about how we're constructing our value range here in logical poker fashion, we're building it around 7s, 8s, 10, 9, ace, 9, 10s, jacks, hands that are good and do seek quite a bit of value in denial here. Here's a theorem for you. The more often villain is checking back the flop, the more important protection is for you. Have a think about it. Does it sound right? If it doesn't sound right, that's because you don't deserve to play the game. Anyway, we make the bet, villain calls, and the ace of spades comes in the turn. If you've never seen my channel before, I say that a lot. It's a joke. Chill out. Stop tapping away on your keyboard. Stop writing a comment. You'll have calmed down in five seconds. Is it really worth it? Ace of spades on the turn, infinitely better for villains range this one. This hand actually reminds me of a hand I reviewed of Andreas's in our most recent coaching format that came out on this channel. He had donk bet the flop in a really similar situation, though it was a single raised pot. But in any case, the person that just three bets pre and flat calls the donk bet is going to like the ace a lot more than the donk better. So looking to check really frequently here. This opens the door for villain to do stupid stuff with loads of their range. And also we're just saying we don't really have a thick enough value hand here to go for a big bet. And I'm not sure I love the concept of building small bets on this particular card. I just don't think we have the equity anymore to want to value bet 10s, 7s or 8s or anything like that. So I'm just going to play checks or probably pot size bets with sets and things of that nature. Maybe with like ace queen on the rare occasion I have it, but mostly sets. But usually just checking this with close to range. Villain bets half pot. We decide to call. River is a nine of spades. We check. Villain basically exposes themselves as a recreational player with this bet size. 20 exactly into 50. It's not a hot key. It's an exact bet slider amount. I think it's very likely they're recreational. If they're recreational, God knows what they could be up to here. They could have fours. They could have eights. They could have all of the combos of king, queen of diamonds. I don't think the dunk bet on the flop is going to generate as many folds as it perhaps could against the recreational player because they're in position and just don't like being dunk bet at. So overall, I think this is a really standard call against this sizing. We're usually going to lose. We're probably going to lose like more than two thirds of the time here to some ace queen or something. That's probably a bit pessimistic, actually. We might win maybe like 35, 36% of the time here in reality, but easily 
slightly more than the 22% we need to win. If you fold this spot, it's because you're trying too hard to win more than half the time. You want the situation to be more good than bad. You don't get to do that as a poker player. You have to just take the pot odds in this spot. Queen Jack off, this is what I mean. Recreational players' ranges can get really sprawling and out of control pre-flop when they make this 3-bet. It's not a bad river sizing though, it's going to be pretty difficult for me to navigate here with 8s, 10s, etc. Hands like this. I may have folded some of them on the turn, but yeah, the size might perform quite well. I actually think people don't do a great job of reacting to small bets on the end. I think they can overfold very easily due to the sheer number of combos you have to defend in order to play optimally there. 10-8 of hearts. We go for an open in the hijack. Usually going to check a 6-5 rainbow, but I will build some bets in this handle bet more than average, filling calls. Jack turn, we block a few backdoor floaty hands here, like the king, ten of hearts, etc. This is probably one of the hands that's closest to pure check in my range, although on this card I can be a little bit free with my betting. I decide to check this time, villain leads the river and we're done. Pretty clear bet check bet candidate I would say if villain checks the river, I think the jack gives us an, enough of a range boost that we can start bluffing 10 high with impunity on that note. Queen 8 offsuit here, open by small blind, we make the call in the big blind, little bit loose but this is a recreational player, I'd always take this spot. They bet small, we make it about 7 here so we need just under 50% fold equity to already be printing money automatically here risking seven to win eight on top of that we have the queen we have the eight villain's gonna have to make a lot of really dicey looking defense with hands like king queen in this spot and stuff like that i think people see bet range here even though perhaps it's a little bit of a stretch on this board overall i think this is a an exploitative play that's very much in the spirit of cash injection episode one that i mentioned earlier for that exploit and more details on it and nine other exploits that are sure to boost your win rate check out cash injection on carrotcorner.com it doesn't work this time that doesn't make me a bozo i may be a bozo but not because this raise didn't work nine of clubs on the turn check i think betting here would be a bit spewy against the short stack on this card jack x probably isn't going anywhere there's some flush stuff there's some pair plus draw stuff now if i thought my opponent was going to overfold on the flop then usually that means you want to slow down a little bit more on the turn this is kind of close i just think that it's slightly below the threshold of equity i would need to semi bluff here on this node so i decide to check i may take some shots at river or do some weird stuff not on this card though on this card some really cool things happen one we win against sixes sevens five x now etc as long as it doesn't contain a king or an ace kicker we chop with queen high that just decided not to bluff there's enough showdown value i don't think there's enough fold equity against ace x plus here to make bluffing a good idea i check i lose to ace queen on to the next one ace king we go for the three bet villain four bets and we make the call this is already really indifferent facing a third pot here with this hand with a heart i'd always be continuing i think this one can just mix king jack of hearts under the gun we open and we get three bet to the sizing we go for the four bet villain calls you know you win one you lose one four bet pots one and one king 10 off go for the three bet here a little bit loose but if i expect my opponent can be a recreational player i'm just always going to go ahead and make three bets like this one Villain checks, we go for the third pot here. I think the turn is a pretty frequent barrel with this hand, but not absolutely every time or anything we do check this time, though I think betting turn is definitely very valid and folding river here, I guess. Raising river is a line that probably in theory happens with hands like this one. We don't have any club blockers. We do have the spade blocker. This is probably the kind of hand that's not a disaster to raise river with in GTO. In reality, when you check back this turn and then raise river, I don't love the fold equity. I don't think my opponent's going to do a great job of folding any value value bets there and if they don't fold value bets it gets really really bad to just bluff and hope they also have a bluff. Five six suited, gonna go ahead and three bets sometimes here. Also folding is fine, calling's not a disaster either. Fill in four bets, this is absolutely the kind of hand that thrives in four bet pots as much as a hand that's taking the worst of it can thrive. This is a lot better than having like ace queen off or ace jack off or something like that obviously. Ace queen off actually in these positions is maybe okay but it does get really bad in, in later, in earlier positions I mean. So we go for the call, we flop a straight with the straight flush draw and flush draw. Kind of a good flop I would say for the 5-6. Jack 10 is not really a hand that people should be for betting here. So yeah, we're in good shape to say the least. You may remember a few videos ago we published some content about 5 devastating weapons for your arsenal. 
that was like me wielding a gun. You guys remember, yeah, you remember. So in that video, one of the five devastating weapons, gotta love the YouTube algorithm, was the one about checking back at low SPRs when you have a really nutty invincible hand. This is a pretty nutty invincible hand. Bet and check you're both fine in theory. You do want to do a fair bit of one-thirding on 987. However, you also want to do some checking. And honestly, I would guess this checking range is underprotected. I would guess that check outperforms bet here against humans. I can't be sure about that, but I think so. I'm leaning that way. I do check. Bill and checks. I think now it's time to get some value. Third pot's fine. Like if you again, if you think about how we're constructing here. We're using jacks, we're using tens, we're using queens, we're using 10 9, we're using ace 9 suited if we're really loosey goosey pre. We're using stuff like this, maybe we're using sixes, and we're just basically trying to get a bit of really thin value from ace king, ace queen combos. We're trying to clean up a bit of equity against over cards that should fold here. Villa makes the call, a king comes on the river, easy jam for us, and somehow we got our turn bet called. Oh yeah, they had the flush draw. I missed this in game actually. It was like they called with naked king queen, but of course they had the king queen of diamonds. I think this is an interesting hand from both players. I think we played it pretty well. The opponent's obviously unlucky to hit the king on the river, but yeah, I think it's pretty standard. You could also jam the turn as well, and jam the turn seems much better actually than call, because it's not so clear that your hand is a really a bluff catcher, like we could bluff king queen there ourselves, we could bluff ace five or something, I just, I just, I'm not sure about the, the turn check call, it might just be a turn check jam, to be honest. If you think about it, villain should play some overpair combos that way, so having a jam with this hand pure seems reasonable to me. I don't know if the turn check call is a mistake, it might be. Go ahead and peel here with king queen off in the big blind. I'm gonna go for 2x pot on this node generally. If you think about what our range is doing here, again, the logic of building a value range, that's what this video is really all about. We're value betting jack eight, which is a ton of combos because we can have jack eight off sometimes pre. We also have sevens, nines, we have nine, seven, ten, seven, ten, nine suited, seven, four suited. We just have an absolute ton of premium value bets here, all of which would want to bloat the pot immensely, making up for lost ground. So we go for this really big sizing. Villain makes the call and we decide to overbet the river here. I think this is a cool combo to follow through with. We don't have any diamonds. We have blockers to like kings, queens, which are like really good hands now, as well as like king 10. I know kings and queens will bet the flop a lot, but they shouldn't pure bet the flop up on this texture I don't think. So overall this seems like an okay hand. I guess it sucks to block like king jack, queen jack on the other hand, but yeah there's a lot of worse bluffs here that seem to block more folds than this. So I decided to follow through with this hand. I think it's probably optional in theory. I think it'll perform quite well in practice. I think this is fine. I'm not like over the moon about it. It does work this time which is nice. That doesn't make it an ingenious play. You want to be careful about the reaction of when your bluffs succeed. You just sit back in your chair and cackle and you're like I am a genius. My bluff worked. I'm so good at poker. You want to be careful about that. Bad bluffs work sometimes as well, you know. That bluff was kind of meh, it was whatever. Ace 8 of hearts, we open under the gun, we're called by Big Blind. Good, quite a bit of check on A7-3. I can also bet this hand for one third pot though. Bill and checks. I think bet and check are both totally reasonable here. We bet, they fold, not much to say about that one. Pocket fours now, we call the open from under the gun, check the flop, call the one third. River comes this card. We have a lot of value now. We have like 10x at low frequency. We do raise flop a lot with that, but certainly not pure. We have 8x here, a fair bet. We have 9-7. We have the straight flush, of course. We have flushes. We have pocket sixes. We have a lot of hands. I think we can have a big bet here with a flush. I think we can have an overbet here with an 8 or with a 10. We can have a really big overbet with a 10, a smaller overbet with an 8. You can build various sizes. My advice to students in river spots is that it's actually more intuitive and easier, in my opinion, to build build multiple sizes where necessary than to try to put yourself in a cupboard of trying to just use one bet size. When you lock yourself in that closet and you only have one bet size, it, there's really no room to move, it's difficult, it's hard to know what that bet size should be. You have all these different hands that have different needs and wants. However, when you just decide to use a size that's appropriate for various parts of your range and you build like a three sizing strategy, you'll always know that you can bluff for either sizing. So we just kind of roll here, we see what the RNG spits out and then we, we pick that sizing honestly I don't think it's a big deal what you do here I really don't I think all sizes are relatively similar at EV if you block you're going to get less fold equity but you're paying less when you run into it and when you overbet, you pay a lot more when you run into a good hand and get called you get more fold equity so it really is just a trade-off this time we roll medium so we go for this sizing and we win by the way, the RNG, I know I sound like I'm contradicting myself. Sometimes I'm like, don't use an RNG ever. Sometimes I'm like, use an RNG. The message I'm trying to get across to you is that most of you just shouldn't use an RNG, especially on the turn of the river. 
Sometimes I use it, but only when I'm really certain that there's not like an EV swing. And I try to usually not use it so that I don't come out of my flow state. Over RNGing does remove you from a state conducive to good exploitative poker sometimes. And when you're using it in the wrong spots and you're mixing in random mistakes, it's just a nightmare. Don't do that. Just try and find the best line for the most part. Opening eights here, queen, queen, six. We go for a check. Bill and bets. We check the turn. Bill and bets again. And yeah, you get shown all kinds of nonsense in, in spots like this. Like weaker players are just flatting so wide. Their base range is so unimaginably out of control that when you check to them, you just really open the hatch for them to start betting absolutely everything. So this volley of bullets, they fire at you. Don't be worried about it. Just start calling down. If they bet the river, I'll probably just call as well because I just don't think they're going to have enough value there, especially if they go kind of big because then they're just saying they have exactly a queen or a boat. I don't know. I think weaker players can easily have like all of the combos of ace nine off pre and stuff like that. And that just really causes huge issues for them. Like this hand as well is just an example of how out of control this player probably is on this node. King queen, we go for a call in a small blind here. I roll this very occasionally. This is almost always a three bet. Sometimes you can call and we decide to check call jack 4-3 here, which I think is good. I mean, this is a bit thin, but with the king of hearts, I think it should be fine against half pot. We can also raise here, of course, but we want to do that sparingly against half pot because we don't have a lot of combos of ace jack plus or whatever our value range is going to be. Ten of hearts, we check, they bet. I think this is a pure raise. I don't think there's anything else we can do here. We just have way too much equity. If we do get jammed on or something, it's really not the end of the world because so much of their jamming range is just going to be the nut flush or the ace of hearts. So we're in pretty terrible shape when that happens anyway. So I wouldn't really worry about reopening and facing jam here. I think you'll face a jam really rarely. And when you do, you'll be in terrible dire shape anyway, and therefore won't mind folding. I think this is a pure raise. I don't think there's any other way to play really high equity, no showdown value hands like this, or low showdown value hands like this on turns. Queen nine call out the big blind, fold to tiny bet. You got to fold something to this. Bit of an anticlimactic spot. Fives, we open under the gun, called by big blind. Check, check is fine. You could also bet flop sometimes. Check, 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 check. What a fun few hands to finish on, huh? Hopefully there's one more good spot. Flying nines out of the small blind here. Check, check. Go for third pot here. I think that's fine. You can also go bigger. Lots of stuff you can do in this spot. Final hand of the day. Try and keep this under 30 minutes at least. Face an open with 8-7. You can do a bit of 3-betting here. We flat this time. And what an amazing hand to finish on, guys. Of course, we go crazy here and we attack the C-bet because everybody knows two undercards with no backdoor on boards that are amazing for your opponent's range when you're out of position and have a really high hard time coming up with that many value raises is great. So of course you raise here. Not really. You fold. If you raise there, yes, yes, you get it. You guys all know the script by now. You don't deserve to play the game, but that won't stop you pressing the like button, leaving a comment and coming back here the next video and doing the same thing. I hope you're enjoying the content. Don't forget to check out carrotcorner.com for all of my paid content and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.